So let's just say you've uh, raided your dad's garage. You've had a look through and you've dug out his old mountain bike that he's had since 1994. And this is it. It hasn't been used in years. It's just been sat in the back of the garage gathering dust and gathering rust. Um, so this is what I've got here. It, it's not actually my dad's or anything like that. It's just one that I found on eBay and it was only going for cheap and I managed to pick it up for £3.20. Um, the guy said he had bought it in 1994. It's a Cloud Butler. There we go. And it's got Reynolds Chromo tubing. Um, we've got Tektro brake booster on the front with some Shimano Altus brakes, but they'll be replaced because they're broken. Um, Shimano Altus wheel set, Shimano Altus 3x, well, it's got Shimano Altus everything really. 3x6 uh, trigger shifters. Uh, let's try and get that where it's not in the. There we go. They're nice trigger shifters. Um, again, hubs, Shimano as well. Everything Shimano on it. Um, it's 100% original. It just hasn't used it in years. Uh, so what I'm going to do in this video is fix it up, strip it down, fix it up, so you can see, I guess from start to finish, what you can do to get that old mountain bike working again. Um, hopefully, I don't think any of this is seized, but there's a potential the seat post might be seized, potential the stem might be seized. Um, I know the chain was completely rusted, because here it is, that is solid. Um, I've got new tyres to put on because they're trashed. You can see they're flat where they've been sat for so long. Um, but everything else is going to be stripped down, grease up and hopefully get it back on the road. I need to clean up a bunch of this chrome on the front end because that's rusted. But the rest of it looks alright. Oh, that's what I was going to get. Change their guard. So this has been interesting. Uh, just taking the, it was literally just held on by two bolts. This the brake booster. But this one side was um, seized, so I've had to clamp on some mole grips and just very slowly, bit by bit, work it backwards and forwards and spray some you know, shock and unlock or uh, WD-40 in there. And slowly, it's coming off. Slowly. Um, but I'm not going to be able to actually use these cantilevers because they come with uh, this is the one that I took off on the back here you can see the plastic bushing um, these altus brakes come with these and you can't get replacements and they always crack or fall off so this one's got one, it's cracked but I, um, the other side that's on the bike doesn't actually have one. Um, so I need to replace those. Whew, that was a fight. Okay, so I honestly thought this might be the downfall of the bike, this stem. Um, I've had to soak it for a week uh, with the bike upside down and this tube foot, the seat tube, seat tube? head tube full of uh, fluid um, but it's come free I managed to get it free um, had to work the bolt loose I might have to replace that I'm going to try and clean all this up um, it's definitely going to need a lot of grease on it when it goes back together but it's free, it's out so I can continue with the bike um, I'm actually changing the wheels to quick release so that's my next job to do and the next video to make um, and then I can carry on stripping it down and once it's stripped I can start greasing it all back up again. That's the frame now, all stripped down, got the, f uh, got the stem out, the forks are out, um, but first the wheels. Here's the rear, uh, the front even, blah, it's 
stuck on there. We have some nice new tyres on it. Focus that. There we go. These are actually quite cheap tyres. Uh, they're only what do they pay? Like fourteen pounds for the pair, but they actually look quite nice. Um, so got them on. What you'll also see is the axles. They're now changed to quick release, which I've done a video of, and that should be out by the time this video goes out. So front and rear, I've got quick release on. Um, it had a cassette on the rear, so it's got a free hub, which is not what I was expecting. I was expecting a free wheel. The bike comes with six speed on the rear. Um, six speed cassettes are super hard to find. And I have found one. Um, it's 25 quid plus like another 10 pound postage because it comes from Greece. Um, so I'm going to try the old cassette to start with when I put it back on the bike see if it works, it's probably going to skip so I'm probably going to have to end up buying that one anyway uh, the new one, um, so that's going to go on but this um, free hub body was actually completely seized before well and truly um, what I did was soak, take it off, it's just got a 10mm Allen key style socket on there and um, it's actually got a lot more points than the Allen key but 10mm fits in there perfectly and it's easy to undo just unbolt it and it comes straight off um, I just took that when it was completely seized, solid soaked it in a bath of degreaser in an ultrasonic bath ultrasonic bath for a couple of days uh, kept on running the ultrasonic every now and again um, and it didn't actually, sh it got it to move probably about that much and then I put it back on the bike got the WD-40 um, put the cassette on got a chain whip and tried to break that seal that was on there from the rust and as I did it sprayed WD-40 into the sides without the axle in of course um, and it freed up so that spins now um, I sprayed so much WD-40 down it to clean it out and then put some Phil Woods grease in after um, and it seems to be good seems to be we'll see how it stays it could seize up again at any point and if it does then that is going to be a pain because these are very hard to find in 6 speed because they're so short um, but that's the wheels next is the headset and forks, which I just have to go outside to get. Okay. As you see there, there are now two sets of forks and two headsets. And that is because, focus, the old headset, uh, the bottom right here, is absolutely trashed. Uh, if you, can, you can't really see it on there. Uh, but the bottom race, the bearings inside it were these ones, <laughs> which you can see are absolutely, well, destroyed. Um, so that rusty race damaged the bearing surface in the bottom race here in the bottom cup um, so I thought I was just gonna have to replace uh, the headset which will be nice and easy but someone um, these forks are the original ones which are Elan um, Elan Sprinter it's got the 1994 date stamp on it which you can see there um, but you also see there, that is the crown race. I'm trying to hold you steady, there we go. The crown race looks to be built in to the forks. I can't remove it. I've tried to get a chisel underneath and pry it off, 
bit seems to be actually part of the forks which really sucks because it's completely trashed I can't use that to put a new bearing race on otherwise it won't spin so I've had to buy some new forks which are here um, I'm going to have to measure them up cut them down install a new headset and then we'll be away to do the next part ok so I need to trim these new forks down so they're the same size as the old forks which are here um, the new headset is the same size as the old so there should be same I should need the same size steerer tube and on this we're looking at from it's hard to do one handed from the crown to the top it's around 195mm so what I've done on the new set which is here from the crown to the cut point there we go oh god from the crown there to the cut point up there is 195mm see if I can balance it there for a second so if we zoom in, there we go um, ok so that is the size of the steerer that I need but what I've done is because I don't want to cut it and then find out that it's uh, too roughed up or anything like the threads are too tough to get on I've put on the new uh, what's that? The top bearing race, which has got the got the bearing race on top, the like the lock ring, and the old one on. Um, and the old one's got the flat surface going down, so I'm just going to cut down the side of this flat surface, and that should give me a a straight line. Okay, no one wants to hear a hacksaw screeching through metal, um, but there it is, cut. Um, the hacksaw kind of bent a little bit during the cut so it had a curved surface on it so I've just got a simple uh, metal file and just cleaned up the end like so ok that's nice and level now to clean up all these shavings but the reason that I put the um, piece of the headset on to start with was that so that if the threads did get damaged they'd all be on there so that I could push them they'd push the threads back into place so that's gone off nice and easy this is the new what new bear top bearing race and there we go so that's got good threads on the top which should hopefully Thread back on now. There we go, nice and easy. Good job. So you've seen this video now to put the headset in. Hopefully, that's all good. Um, so I've got the front end pretty much assembled. I need, need to clean up the stem and everything before I put that back in. Uh, but what I can do now is actually fit the brakes. Um, I can't use the original brakes that came on the bike as I've described before because the shrouds have uh, broken but what I can do is use the ones that came off the Peugeot when I put the Avids on um, the Shimano Exage Country so I've got them lying around so they should maybe not with these pads so take these pads off um, but they should go on there ok so when it comes to these cantilever brakes um, can I zoom in a little bit more? Yeah. can you see just there if I adjust the focus slightly there we go you've got three holes in the back um, they're just for the spring here that's on the back of this mount to sit in now when you slide it on, um, I'm going to grease it in a second but this is just for a demonstration if you were to put it in the bottom hole then it doesn't have much tension at all 
So when the brake is up there, it doesn't have much spring back. If you were to put it in the top hole, then when the brake is in contact with the rim, with the pad on, it's got a lot more spring back in it. So you need to set that to your desired level, really. Um, I'm going to put it in the top one because, you know, why not? Strong. Um, so I'm going to grease these up, attach them on there, and then what this bike actually came with were these brake boosters, which I'm not sure I'm going to be able to use. Um, where's the old brakes? How did they go on? Oh no, I should be able to use them. They need to have um, a packer behind here, but I need to get some new bolts because the old ones are pretty terrible. So, grease those up, look for some new bolts, install these. One second. Okay, let's catch up where we are. Um, for now, just got the wheels on. Uh, I do need to sort out this derailleur because it is trashed at the moment, it's sea solid. So we need to soak it and try and release that um, before I can properly put the wheel in place because it has the dropout hanger rather than a underneath, if that makes sense. Um, but that's on, wheels are on, quick release is done, put the old cassette back on the moment. If that works, saves me about 35 quid, so that's good. Uh, brakes are on, I've put on some Shimano Country Exage calipers. Calipers, is that what you call them? Arms, cantilever arms, which were left over from the Peugeot. Tetro brake boosters run. Um, forks are on. Headsets on. Front wheels on. So the front end's done apart from putting the stem on. I'm also going to have to free up these shifters because they are out of it as well. So that's another video to do. Um, but yeah, she's getting there. I need to take off this bottom bracket, take out the bottom bracket, take off the cranks. And sort that out. Um, they spin still, they're free, they're a bit rusty. I need to work out how to use this derailleur because this is an E type, I believe it's called, so it's fixed on the bottom bracket. So I need to work out how to use that. But I'm just going to clean up the seat post here and put the saddle back on for now, and maybe the stem and the handlebars as well. Ok, I've just popped the handlebars back on, um, I've cleaned up, what's not in focus, I've cleaned up all the stem um, and the bars here, just with some wire wool and some WD-40, um, stripped everything out of this because that was obviously all rusted, so the wedge I stripped down, um, used a like, stiff wire brush on it, cleaned it all up everything now in there is copper greased so hopefully it won't seize again um, I'm just going to do these bar ends now because they're the worst part um, this one especially I might have to respray it so I'm just going to try and whip these off if I can the only problem is the bolts underneath are pretty damn rusted so yeah, that might be a challenge. So, kind of unfortunately, the one here, handlebar extension, is a bit too far gone. Um, you're not going to be able to clean that up. So, I've just keyed both sides up with some sandpaper. It's super bright out today. And I'm just going to spray it with some Hammerite. Um, so, they'll be black. So, I'm going to do that now let them dry while I carry on with the rest of the bike. Okay, so while the uh, shifters are soaking and the bar ends are being sprayed um, and the derailleur, the rear derailleur has been soaking, 
um, I need to service the button bracket just to give it a once over so I think it's just a normal cup and cone um, but with a square taper crank set so I need to get this bolt off which should be 14 maybe 14 mil yeah 14 okay so bolt comes off first pedal scratch down the arm Fourteen mil bolt, and then to get these arms off, I'm going to use my crank extractor, which should be in one piece, but it was a cheap bi cut one and it fell apart. So it's now in two pieces. Just going to unwind it all the way, thread it in. Got some dirty threads on it. Try and thread it in as far as possible. If you only have a couple of threads engaged, then obviously you're just gonna have a risk of pulling those threads out. So try and get this in as far as it will go. like that and then just wind the centre section in and well normally I'd have the handle on there but it fell off so I just have to try and grab the flats of what's left oh wow that's tight and wind it in and as I wind this in, it will be pushing through the hole in the crank arm, pushing against the axle and pulling it off. In thyroid. But it is tight. Very tight. That was my thumb. Uh, oh, ow. Uh. Et voila. So just like that. So what we got? Um, I think it's a normal cup and cone. I'll have to, to get the other side off and then um, and then investigate. Crank sets are off, or crank set is off. I've cleaned it up. It's uh, come up quite well, I think. There is a bit of wear on it, but it's reusable. Yeah, I still need to free that up because that is sea solid. Um, but this is the button bracket. What we have on here is something I have not worked on before. The Shimano E-Type, I believe it's called, derailleur. Um, it's button bracket mounted, as you can see. So I've got to get that off, which I think is... I think it's just going to be a cup and cone. It might be a cartridge. I'll see when I get it off. Um, it's seized like the fr uh, like the rear one. Down in there, I don't know how I'm meant to get to that, but just there, 
just where's my pointer there that's the pinch bolt for the cable I have no idea how I meant to get to that but it's going to be a pain in the ass uh, <laughs> I can't actually move this at the moment because it's seized so we're going to get that off and well see what it's like because I've never worked on that before to get this derailleur button bracket whatever off it should be just one of these tools this one's just a cyclo tool uh, does it got a code SBB it's just a multi pronged tool but I mean the grooves are so corroded inside I might just have to knock it in a bit there you go and always remember on the drive side lefty tighty righty loosey so we're going to be going down to loosen it oh I'm turning my stand I'm turning my stand ok this is going to be tight oh, that's tight Where's my cheap bar? There. <coughs> Come here, cheap bar. Ugh, fucking hell. There we go. Cheap bar did it. There we go. Whew. That was a fight. I'd normally just take the uh, non-drive side off and pull it out. There we go. One derailleur off. What the heck? All right. Well, I'm gonna clean it up. Okay, button brackets out. And it is a cartridge. Um, it's sealed cartridge bottom bracket. It's actually Shimano Altus branded because it reads. Is it Shimano Altus? Well, anyway, it, it reads BBCT90 for the part code. Um, 68 mil shell standard, 1.37 by 24 standard. So standard bit of kit it's just I think slightly different because of the e-type derailleur but I'm gonna look it up I'm gonna go for some lunch now and I'm gonna research these two things BBCT90 and the Shimano Altus e-type derailleur and if it's got a part code on it but anyway I'm gonna research these and then get back to you